Hey everybody, this is Linda West with Living Live. And if you are a business owner who is wondering like, how the heck am I gonna build my list? I'm not sure what to do. Um, or you've been trying to build your list and it's been building it really slowly. Or you have this big list and you're finding that the people that you have on your list aren't really interested in what you have. I wanna welcome you today to enjoy this time where we're going to talk about spot casting. You might wonder what spot casting is. Well, guess what? So do I. So we're going to learn today all about it. And Barbara Ames, you know, she's my guest here today. She is known as an online attraction specialist. Today, we're going to talk about spot casting, how we can help you to build your list and in a short span of time. Right, Barb? Let's get started. Let's jump <laughs> right in, dear. Well, tell us like what First of all, what is spot casting and then why spot casting? Okay, so let, do you mind if I back it up a little bit? So oh, yes, I'll, of course, of course. Okay, great. So, <laughs> so spot casting is a term and a method that I developed and I, I trademarked the term spot cast, but it's actually the uh, combination of two words, cast like a podcast and spot from spotlight. Okay. okay, so that's that's what's where I came up with the word spot cast. But let me back up just a little bit if I could. Yeah. Um, so anybody that's listening here, obviously they realize that, uh, you know, if you want to create an online business, right, if you want to promote yourself online or get clients online, and I primarily uh, work with people who want to create an online business, particularly change makers, uh, coaches, holistic uh, practitioners, that kind of thing, right? And that's kind of the big dream, right? Is to be able to build a following and get clients online without having to go to networking events and blah, 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 right? So to do that, uh, really the critical first step, the foundation for that is you need to build a list of ideal prospects, right? I'm sure you get that, Linda. You, you've been doing that yourself for years. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> it's painstaking. It's it, it can be painstaking, but it doesn't have to be. So, mm. um, so when I first started in this business, I, that's exactly the dream I had of becoming an online coach, right? And I was following all these other online coaches and I was taking all these classes and how to do a webinar and how to create a sales funnel and social media, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And about a year and a half, two years, I was just spinning my wheels, not getting anywhere and no clients, no cash, no nothing, no closer to any of that. And then it started dawning on me, you know, that the, the reason, like what's different between me and all these people that I'm following and, you know, investing a lot of money in. And I realized that the one thing that was different is they all had a list. So mm. they, when they launched a program, they just sent out an email to their list and people purchased it, right? Like like me, for example. Um, but then when I launched a program, I would post it on social media to crickets, <laughs> right? <All> right. <laughs> it's like my friend. Oh, yep, in there, still there. Yeah, don't, don't, yeah, you know, I mean, that's, <laughs> and if you think about it on social media, like on, you know, we all kind of come into this thing and Facebook is going to be the great white grace that's going to save us and our business. But, you know, think about it, the, who sees your posts on Facebook, your friends do. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. And and so I would get comments from my friends. Oh, how sweet, Barb. Look what you're doing. Isn't that cute? You know, and and but but nobody that was a ideal process, prospective client. Right. Uh, I wasn't getting out there. And even if I was, which Facebook isn't going to just put you out to the population at large. Uh, but even if they did, it's like dropping a bucket of water in the ocean. It's like, you know, <laughs> right? So, I mean, unless you pay them money for Facebook ads. So after, you know, a couple of years of doing this and not getting anything, that's when I realized that what they all had that I didn't was a list. So then I started scratching my head and going, well, how can I get an email list? How can I first collect people who are interested in what I have to offer? Right. And it doesn't matter what it is you have to offer. I work with, you know, people who are, you know, health coaches and, you know, spiritual people who help you find your purpose and love coaches, dating coaches, you, you name it. Right. You still if you're a dating coach, you've got to get in front of 
single people who don't want to be single anymore, right? That's, mm -hmm. So it's not it's not just anybody, but that specifically those people. Um, so all right, so then I went, well, how am I going to build a list? And uh, through a lot of trial and tribulation, I discovered that there are three ways to build a list. Would it help for you and your audience to hear what those three ways are? Yes, please. <laughs> cool. All right, so, first, let's say hi to Abigail. Hello, Abigail. Good to see you today. Um, oh, if if you're watching live and you have any questions for Barbara, please um, put them in the comments below. We'll answer them right here while we're live. Um, if you're watching the replay, type replay, hashtag replay in the comments below. So let's hear those three ways. I'm ready. To build a list, yeah. And I can't see who's <coughs> who's commenting. So just oh. interrupt me, Linda, if somebody comments. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, with a question and I'll Thank you. Uh, just, just interrupt me. Just okay. shut me up. All right. Um, <laughs> all right. So the three ways, the first way is what I call passive list building passive. And that's basically what I was inadvertently doing. So passive list building, if you think about it is like even one of the first things we do as entrepreneurs is we create a website. We put all this time, money, and effort. Oh, I'm going to create this website. So, so, and we stress over it and we put all this energy into it. But the website isn't the thing. We still need to get people to the website, right? So that that's what people don't realize. Just having the website doesn't at all guarantee that anybody's going to see the website. So that's kind of what, what I call passive list building. It's like having the th build it and they will come. Right. Yeah, well, and, I, and I want you guys to hear this because that is so important. So many of my clients are like, well, I got to get my website up. I got to get my website up. No, you don't. Don't stress over it. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm five years into this journey and uh, I have a, you know, a six figure plus business now and I still don't have a website. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's true. I've built my entire business from my list, right? From building mm -hmm. my focus on my list. But mm -hmm. and and it's I, I'm overdue for having a website. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't have a website, but I'm also saying in the beginning, you just throw just throw something together and put it out there. Um, it's good enough, and you'll change it six times from Sunday before you're you're, right. you're where you're gonna be. Um, all right. So passive list building. Another form of passive list building is blogging. It's the same thing, right? The blog, and that's again what they used to say. The gurus used to say is build it and they will come. Just start blogging. Well, you know that might have worked back in the early days of the internet when, right after Al Gore first invented the internet, right? Mm -hmm. But um, but nowadays, I just looked it up actually, and in 2018, there were 550 million blogs. 550 million? Oh my God. 550 million. So if you think that just by having a blog, somebody is magically going to find it, it's your, that's what one of my clients calls magical thinking. And the same thing with podcasts. Um, I'm not sure the exact number, but it's something like 450,000. It's definitely something like that. So, um, so that's like just doing something and then just kind of sitting back and waiting for the traffic to come to you, yeah. right? Posting on social media, similar. So all of that is passive list building. And like I said, back in the early days of the internet, when there was maybe just a thousand blogs <laughs> total, maybe somebody would have found your stuff and, and found it interesting and subscribed. But nowadays that's not the case. So let me give you an example of, um, of uh, a different way to blog that is not passive, it's more active, um, is where you create a guest blog for somebody who already has an audience, right? So, and now at least you're making sure that your wonderfully written, beautiful content is in front of an audience. But if you just resurrect a, a website or a blog site and post a blog um, expecting people to come, you'll be waiting a very, very long time. So that's passive list building, and that's what most people do, which is why it can seem so excruciatingly slow. So the second way to build a list is paid advertising, 
right? So that's when I uh, finally came, finally realized what was going on uh, that, you know, nobody was just going to happen upon my website. I said, aha, okay, I've got to pay to get this traffic. And of course, Facebook had just, re, you know, started doing Facebook ads then. So I jumped into that game and thousands of dollars later, I had about seven people on my list. So the thing that people don't realize, Linda, is that um, marketing is stage specific. So what's going to work for somebody that's, you know, a six or seven figure entrepreneur is not necessarily going to work for somebody who's just starting out, no clients, no cash and no list, which is who I was at that point. So the problem with face with advertising, advertising is a great way to build your list once you're really established. And what that means is once you have clarity, once you have total clarity on who your ideal client is at, to the point where you can make a statement and they, that they read and go, wow, how did she read my mind, right? That's when you're ready for advertising. And do you know what a great way is to know if you've got that kind of clarity yet? Um, I'm thinking that it's when you can say what you're doing and people understand it. <laughs> yes, but there's an even better mark. Yes, and um, there's a, actually a really great marker to know when you've got total clarity on your How's ideal that? client to that point that advertising will work. Uh, just look at your bank account. Oh. <laughs> Uh, so assuming that you're out there making offers, right? If you, you know, if you're, as long as you're making offers to people, when you have clarity, they will, you will have clients, you will sell programs, all that stuff. And your bank account will grow and grow and grow. So your bank account is just reflection really mm -hmm. of how much clarity you have and how effective you're being at promoting yourself, which, which is really about how much clarity you have. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you've got passive list building, which will work for you if you've got years and years and years to build this business and you've got paid advertising, which isn't appropriate if you're just getting started. So what do you do if you're just getting started? You've got no clients, you've got no cash and you've got no clarity. Well, that's where I was scratching my head, you know, some years ago when I ran across a, uh, a seminar uh, that some first from somebody that was talking about list building, right? And she was talking, of, she was going over the same problems that passive list building takes a long time and, uh, you know, paid advertising is great when you have clarity. And she brought up a whole brand new kind of list building that I was not even aware of. And that's partner list building. So partner list building, I kind of alluded to it a minute ago when I said, if you have, if you want to write a blog post, it's much better to do a guest blog where you're writing on somebody else's blog who has an audience. So that's a form of partner list building. And there's a very, very popular way of partner list building. Giveaways is one, if uh, everybody here has heard of giveaways. And the Almighty Telesummit is another version of list building. So, Linda, have you heard of that? Do, do you think your audience, do you want me to explain what a Telesummit is and how it works? Uh, why don't you go ahead and explain it just in case, like just mm -hmm. like the short version? The very short version, yeah. yeah. And this is the method that I would say, you know what's pretty cool is that the coaching industry is really in its infancy. Really? Um, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I just came back from a uh, transformational leadership or leaders retreat and they were confirming that the whole coaching industry is in its infancy and the online coaching industry specifically is even younger. So hmm. there's like literally the first flush of online coaches that came there's on. There's still and, hope. <laughs> oh, there's plenty of hope, you guys. That's, you have not missed the boat. It's you are everybody listening to this. If you're in, if you want to get into that, there's it's still the still vibrance, just just beginning, just beginning. Cool. But um, 
but anyway, all the people that if you if you're following any online coaches or transformational leaders that are building their business online, chances are most of them built their business, built their list with a telesummit. And again, it's a partner list built. So what they did is they create a telesummit is an online conference or event where the host interviews speakers uh, and the speakers now promote the event to their list. And when somebody opts in for that event, they now become part of the host list, right? So most of the speakers, most of the people that you are following now have grown their list through a telesummit. And they typically feature between 20 and 30 speakers. And they're on topics like women's empowerment and, you know, the, the she summit and maybe, you know, the health for, you know, health for all summit, that kind of a topic. And they worked really well for the longest time and now here's the shoe drop you guys guess what they just aren't working anymore <laughs> i know i know just like everything right because it has to see its day like something comes out it's it starts off slow it picks up steam it really grabs a hold everybody's doing it and that's when it has to drop because when everybody's doing it it's nobody's paying attention anymore Exactly. And I'll tell you, that is how, after I saw that speaker that I mentioned, and she told me about that, I jumped into the game and I got into it right at the tail end. So my very first list build, I, uh, I hosted a summit that I called the Work Less, Earn More Summit. Very broad, right? And, right. <laughs> and what's cool about it is that I didn't even know what I was going to, I mean, I knew I was going to coach on business and marketing, but I didn't know who and I didn't know what I was going to teach people or what it was going to look like or anything. And that's the really cool thing about this model is that you can you can not have clarity. I didn't have any clarity. It wasn't until the end of that summit that I started piecing it together. Uh -huh. And it was through the process of putting together the summit that I got clarity. Well, on that first list build, I got 3,000 people on my list. Mm -hmm. And I right after that summit, I was able to get my first five clients and hit $25,000. So that was, I know, that was so, like, that was my my coming out party. That was my entrance into online coaching. And since then I've grown my business to over six figures. So, you know, like I said, it was a, it's a great model and it worked really great since then I've hosted, oh gosh, more than half a dozen summits myself. And I have coached literally hundreds of other people uh, through their first summit. And that's why when I started noticing that over the past year, year and a half, two years, like there, it's just been harder and harder to get people to sign up for them. Mm -hmm. That first summit, as I said, I had 3,000. The last one that I did, I was scraping to get a 1,000. And it was really sad because I was like, this is the perfect model for emerging coaches who don't know anybody, don't have a list. So if you don't have a list, it's hard to partner with somebody unless you do the legwork like this for a summit. Um, because, you know, your list is, before people want to partner with you, your list are like, is like poker chips, right? And before you have a list, you don't have any poker chips, so you, you can't get a seat at the table. And that's why doing the legwork to put together this summit was really your poker chips, and then you got in, and now you got your whole, your full hand of poker chips. Now you can partner with people in other ways. Um, and, and when I, that last summit that I did, and also just watching my clients get less and less and less results, and it's so much work. Right. Anybody that's put together a summit knows it takes a good 80 to 120 hours of work. I mean, it's just a lot of work and for, you know, 20 speakers or 30 speakers, it's like chasing cats everywhere. And, and then you end up with just a couple hundred leads. It's maddening. So when I got to that point, I realized, God almighty, what, you know, there's just no other viable alternative for an emerging entrepreneur to build a list as quickly as they used to be able to with the telesummit. I thought, you know, the model is really good. There's some good parts to it and there's some parts that aren't working. So I tore the whole model apart and re put it together. And that's where I came up with the spot cast model. 
Okay, so before we get to the spot cast model, we actually have a, a question here from April. <coughs> Excuse me. And she asks, is there typically any vetting of the speakers done for a telesummit or are they usually open to anyone? Yes, no, there's typically vetting. So it depends on the host. And I've seen all hosts, you know, run all different kinds of things. But the purpose, because it is a, it's, it, you could call it a joint venture promotion or it's a partner promotion, right? So typically the role of the host is to make sure that everybody has roughly equal promotional mm, muscle, shall we say, right? So if you, Linda, have a list of 5,000 and, you know, Sally has a list of 5,000 and Ben has a list of 10,000 or 7,000 and then April has 200, it's, it's not really fair to Ben and you to promote April because the, you're all doing it for the exposure, right? And so part of the host job is to make sure that everybody has roughly equal exposure just to make it fair to everybody. So in that way, it's a, it's a partner promotion. And what about um, like there's influencers out there that you know everybody wants to get on the influencers list, of course. I mean, like that's ideal, right? You're on a list of somebody who has a million followers. But um, my guess is that probably most of them don't send out to their list because you're using their name to attract people to come to the summit. Would, would that be a pretty good assumption on the most part? That's a really great <laughs> question. So I, what, what I've noticed in like just coaching so many people through so many different summits is there is kind of a sweet spot for a list size for summits, right? So okay. that the influencers, if you call it that when you when they get much over ten thousand people on their list, 10, 20, 30,000, they're, you know, A, they're really not they're they've moved on to Facebook ads and other kinds of list building themselves. And they're not that interested. And B, the other thing I found, believe it or not, the vast majority of those people, their list is not very engaged. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so really this, yeah, so really the sweet spot is somewhere between, um, you know, I would say a thousand and six, seven, eight thousand right in there. Okay. And, and even a little, and even a little bit less than a thousand. So people that have like a thousand or 2000 people on their list, they're hungry, right? So they're engaging their, their list. Mm -hmm. They're, they're, I don't want to say milking, but they're really nurturing their list, right? And so those people, their lists tend to be much more engaged. So we'll call them mini influencers, right? Or influencers on the rise. Okay, that's cool. I love that. Thank you. And then April said, so what I heard you say is that it's all about numbers and not about the value that the person can bring to the table, even if they have a small tribe. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I guess the, know, the numbers are the numbers. The reality is the reality. The reality is the reality. And look, um, I myself have, and I've also coached other people. Like I have given people that I knew didn't have the same list juice as some of the other people on an event that I'm hosting, but I've given them a shot. I did something like that just recently in uh, my most recent spot cast actually with somebody who I thought was absolutely amazing. And you can call that a gift from the host. Like I, to me, that's a, that's a gift where I'm like, you know, okay, Sally, I want to, promote you to my audience and all the other, you know, the amalgamation of the audiences of the other speakers. And to be fair to the other speakers, like if I said I would have five speakers, I'll make sure there's five speakers who all have equal promotional muscle. And then I'll have Sally as kind of an additional thing. Do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's one way to handle that. So um, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be as cut and dry as it's all just a numbers game because we are human beings for heaven's sakes. Right. Right. <laughs> right? right. <clears throat> so it's just that, you know, it's learning how to play team and play, you know, play in the bigger game. Well, and also maybe depending too on what results you want. I mean, if you, if you're not really too worried about getting financial results, if you just want to share and put people out there, you know, that's, that's awesome, right? Because 
then you're not so worried about the numbers. But, you know, maybe the people who are on the show are feeling the same way. Like, I just want to get my message out there. I just want to be heard. And they're not worried about the numbers either. So it all depends on what, like, what results do you want out of your time that you're spending? It's, that is such an important point, Linda. You know, I, I my new favorite <laughs> saying is context is everything. Context is everything. So I help emerging entrepreneurs build a list and make get their first clients and make cash flow their business. So if cash flowing your business is your priority, then yeah, you're going to want to be efficient with your energy and where you put it and you're going to want to be intentional. But like you say, if you just want to get your message out and you don't really care about cash flowing your business, absolutely. Then it doesn't it you you know, do what you want to, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. But even then, if you want to get your message out, the, the, it, it, the intentional way to do that is to reach as many people as you can. And the best way mm. to do that, right, is to get speakers that will promote, have equal promotional juice, right? So it's all. That's true. It's no a good how point. You look at it. Yeah. And I did have, um, I think the very first summit I was in, it was a friend who was putting on a summit. She was doing her first. She didn't know what she was doing. And she just wanted some people to be on her summit so she could have that experience. And so, you know, I, I did it because I just think she's amazing and I knew she'd do a good job. And so, you know, being on, on that was a lot of fun. So see, we've got questions here. I'm not really sure what they mean. So I'll just shout them out. Um, it says, but what's the case? And then about what, please. So I'm not sure what those mean. So if you can elaborate on what your questions mean, that would be very helpful. So let's talk about the difference between spot casting and summits then. Yeah. So as I said, you know, I built up the summit and it was, it was so great. It got me a list of my first clients and my first, you know, $25,000 in my business. And now they're just not working anymore. So mm -hmm. what isn't working about them? That's what I did. I said, well, what's the thing that's not working about them? So first of all, I'm going to say they're too long. Good. Yeah. <laughs> right. They're too, too many speakers, right? 20 speakers. Oh my God, I saw one actually listed, um, posted today, Some one of my friends is doing a summit right now, 36 speakers. I don't have time to listen to 36 speakers. Yeah, so, and that's what was happening, is that audiences were, were opting in, because they were interested, especially in the early days when they were kind of novel, right? So people were opting in, and they'd maybe listen to the first interview, and then the second, and then they, like, they're just overwhelmed. They yeah. just, and every day there's another interview, and it's just like, God almighty, there's more, and after a while they get- Unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unsubscribe and off they go, right? Yeah. And so the other thing that was, um, so the audiences, so the from the speaker's point of view, I always try to look at things from, you know, from the, everybody's point of view. So here we've got the host's point of view, the speaker's point of view, and the audience's point of view. Mm -hmm. From the audience, it was overwhelming. So they never usually, they wouldn't make it, I would, I would chart the, um, I, I, every summit I've ever produced, I really carefully charted the statistics and it would be like day one is the highest, uh, interview number one was the highest level of participation. Mm -hmm. Then it, uh, day two, it went down about half, day three about half. And right every day you, we lost about half the number of people. Mm -hmm. And then so after day three, you're you're talking about maybe one percent or ten percent or you know, very low percentage of the entire audience that opted in. So if your numbers speaker number four, five, ten, God forbid, twenty, nobody's listening to your interview. So your motivation as a speaker for doing this thing was to get exposed to others, uh, to other audiences. And what I found like the, one of the last telesummits that I participated on as a speaker, um, I noticed I had, uh, after my interview aired, I had like 30 unsubscribes and I got two new leads. Oh my gosh. So I'm like, I'm like, wait a minute, do the math there. That doesn't work out. Right. Yeah. All right. So, so speakers are, it was getting harder and harder to find speakers. Audiences weren't interested in opting in. So harder to find audiences. And the other problem with them is that the topics were way too broad. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So women's empowerment. It's like, you know, if you're deciding to like join in on that, you're like, I don't even know what that means. Like, what are you guys going to talk about? I'm busy. You know, as, as that famous YouTuber said, ain't nobody got time for that, you yeah. know? <laughs> so 
All right. So those are the things that weren't working. The things that were working big time is, you know, like I said, the exposure to all these different audiences. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, every client I ever got in those early days came from a telesummit that I did. And the other thing that was that works very well about them is that that, you know, there's all kinds of leads. So you're talking about lead generation here and people don't realize that not all leads are equal. So the leads that you generate from a Facebook ad, for example, are cold leads. They don't know you from Adam and it usually takes six to nine months to warm them up to where oh. they would be ready to purchase from you. Okay. Um, right. So the leads that a telesummit generates are very warm leads. Why? Because they see you, the host, even like my first summit, I'd never had a coaching client. I'd never made a dollar in the coaching industry. And all I did was ask people questions like you are, and people saw me as an authority, but she must know something. I mean, it right. boggled my mind because she's asking people questions. She must know <laughs> these people, right? You kind of borrow the stature, so to speak, of your experts. And I was green as green could be. I mean, I was just like, oh, hi, how are you? But right. even still, like people were, see, that was how I was able to get those first five clients, right? So it you build a very warm lead and you also at the same time build authority in your niche, even if you don't have clarity. Like I said, I didn't have any clarity. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what I was going to coach people on or anything. Mm -hmm. um, and and yet I was able to get clients. So that's what was working about a telesummit. And I mentioned all the things that weren't. So I said, well, let's strip away. You know, the, the things that are working are just too good and too juicy um to just do away with so let's what happens if we lower the number of speakers mm -hmm. so i took it from 20 or 30 down to five to seven so that the darn thing only lasts for a week because let's make let, let's be honest like people's attention spans don't last much longer than a week right right let's take this darn thing down to five to seven and let's get away from this really broad topic that people just aren't interested enough in and instead focus it in on a really specific problem that you know your audience is struggling with. So let me give you an example. Okay. Let's say you're a dating coach. So in the past with the Telesummit, we might have had a topic like how to find the love of your life. Okay. okay. So if you are single and you are looking for somebody you know, in the past you were, you didn't have all that many resources. So sure, you probably would have opted in for that. Now you're like, whatever, There's, I'm so inundated right. with this, right? <laughs> so now, but what if you instead did a spot cast? So you spotlight a very particular problem and just five speakers. What if instead you invited five speakers and asked them, how do you create an online profile that really like gets, you know, really shows you authentically and gets the right people to answer. Mm. So now you're talking with five to seven online experts or, or rather dating experts or relationship experts, and you're getting their opinion on a very specific problem. Now, doesn't that seem like a little bit more compelling? Like you're like, wow, okay, yes, I would love to know how to create an online dating profile because mine sucks. And to be able to get five people's different opinion on it, I think that and, and really short interviews, I think that would be really great. Or how about what to say on a first date? See, so I like that because you're um, you're having a very, very specific only one topic, which is cool. Right. But then, like you said, five to seven experts. Why five to seven experts? Well, having different opinions because you because like as we talked, you know, talked earlier, like experts, you know, you uh, there are so many experts that you ask them one thing and this one has says this and this one says something totally opposite. So if you get five to seven different people, then you get to figure out for yourself what's going to work for you. You kind of get right. Exactly. And the other thing, the, one of the reasons I came up with that idea is when, you know, whenever I'm looking to solve a problem, like when I was trying to learn how to do webinars, for example, and I would go and get everybody's car, I would get like seven different people's courses on doing a webinar and I would read and I would get one little thing from one and another thing from another and something else from somebody else. And from that, 
I would be able to, I would really get this webinar model, for example, right? So it's kind of just like what you said, mm -hmm. you know, and what I found is that, there, you know, people, it, it, when you are going in on a really specific problem like that, most of the experts, they're not contradicting each other. They're all saying about the same thing, but they're saying it in a different way. So what you don't hear from one person, you'll hear it from another person or or by the time you get to the third interview, you're going, okay, I think I'm getting this. Mm, that's a good point, that's a good point. So let's go back to some of this here. So we have um, Roy says, hi, Linda and Barb, talking summits here. And then he says, create an online profile. We say, go an inch wide and a mile deep with your summit topic. Yes, yes. exactly. Yes, exactly. Again, exactly. Ab Abigail has a question. And so let's see, before we go a little bit further, um, that you can answer this question now or answer it later. But it's, what's the difference between a summit and a workshop? So I don't know if you want to continue uh, on with the spot casting that you were talking, or do you want to answer that question first? No, I will answer the question. So okay. in this case, um, I'll group a summit and a, uh, uh, a spot cast together they're the same okay. thing as opposed to a workshop so okay. a workshop is a um a workshop is okay well let me, let me put it this way both a summit and a spot cast are a partner list build event okay so they are promoted via the partners so remember i said before with so a workshop if you just create a workshop it's like just creating a website or just creating a webinar, that's only half of the problem. The other half is you gotta get it in front of people. So it's not really a list, creating a workshop or creating a webinar is not a list building event. It's not a list building thing. A webinar it's, is not not a list building thing? No. Oh, really? Okay, no, cool. No. no, think about it. So I create this amazing webinar, okay? So it's, I create an amazing online course. I create an amazing, uh, workshop but now what do I do how do I promote it uh, uh. <laughs> yeah okay so right you get it so so it's not a little now you all you've done is oh, okay I'm, I'm hearing you yeah so you <laughs> now you've got your next problem well what do I do well oh I okay I'll post it on Facebook well right. <laughs> there's the possible okay I'll and then my friends all into ask them to invite their friends maybe maybe they will maybe they won't but yeah they probably yeah. won't yeah <laughs> and, and there's I no partnership with that at all there's no partnership at all so the reason that a summit worked <laughs> and a spot cast now currently works is that you it is a partner event so you are partnering with people who have lists and everybody agrees to promote this event to their lists so what you do in the event almost doesn't matter obviously it does but for, just for the point of the whole point of it is having people together that you're promoting with this thing so that's that's the big difference and that's the, the part that a lot of people have a hard time understanding or getting their they're wrapping their brains around so what's the um Okay, so the, the benefit of the five to seven speakers or experts that you bring in, what's the benefit from their perspective? What are Great. they going to get out of it? Great question. So if, here's one. Here's another truth bomb for you guys. No matter how far along you are in your business, you always need to be list building. A, B, L, B. Always need to be list building. Now, where does that cap out? Well, maybe when you're like Oprah or Deepak Chopra and you've now got just your, your following is organically growing. But short of that, you are always looking to get in front of new people. Okay. This is true for any business. This isn't an online thing. This is true for any business. My husband has an auto repair shop. Right. So first he went out and, you know, did a bunch of marketing and he got some clients. Then he was busy helping his client, his customers. Right. And stopped doing marketing. This is true for any business, whether it's a retail store, a shop, a service, what a beauty salon, doesn't matter. Right. So now he's like working with his client, his customers and they've all got their cars fixed and they've all got their service cars serviced. Right. And now now what? Right. So some starts of them advertising again. Right, because otherwise, like his sales start going down, right? People right. move away, they sell their car, they die, they whatever. So always be list building. So what do these speakers get? 
they get their list building. <laughs> they are list building. That's a really important question, Linda, and thank you for bringing that up. The reason it works for the speakers, if you've ever participated in a telesummit, you've noticed that at the end of every interview, the speaker is offering a free gift. Well, that free gift when is you need to opt in for that, and now that puts you on that person's list. So it's really cool from the audience's point of view, you're getting exposure to these different points of view and these different speakers, the ones that you really resonate with, right? So mm -hmm. it's permission-based marketing. You're only you you're not going to be on anybody's list inadvertently. You have to give them permission by entering your email and, and uh, name. But then let's say you're on a telesummit as a guest and I go, wow, she's really cool. Yeah, I want to get that free ebook that she's talking about or that training or whatever that she's talking about. So now I opt in for your list and now you get to build a relationship with me on your list. So that's okay. why the speakers are on that. So they can get exposure as well. Okay, so the only way they get the list is by based on people opting in to what they they're offering. But that's offering. right. So you can see that when you have with the telesummit model, how that doesn't work because if you're yeah. anything past the third or fifth or tenth speaker, nobody's here in your interview. So you didn't do any list building. You shared the event with your list, but but nobody heard your interview. So you don't get the. It's not reciprocal. You're not getting the the, the exposure that you wanted, right? Yeah, I'd say of um, I've probably been on a out maybe 10 summits and I think I've gotten about six leads yeah total yeah well you're you're probably <laughs> buried in the pack usually. I'm, a yes. too. I'm a, a west you know my last name is west <laughs> so I don't know how that works and they're alphabetical oh my god well yeah I don't so, know <laughs> it's funny I, I started you know way back when when I thought they were still the bee's knees I, you know and I started noticing speakers were starting to insist you know, they would say, yeah, I'll be on your summit as long as I'm, you know, in the first, you know, three days. And I'm like, where's that coming from? And <laughs> But because um, I was tracking the statistics, I realized, yeah, okay, they're getting privy to this as well. And it's clearly they've been in enough summits where they didn't get the leads themselves. So you get it, right? So in a spot cast, like that doesn't happen. It's because it's so short and it's so focused. Everybody stay, the audience stays engaged and everybody gets um, gets the leads that they were ho all the speakers get the leads the exposure and the leads that they were hoping to get not just the host okay and then um, what's the the length for a spot cast like what are the average lengths I recommend no more than seven days so no more than a week or do you okay. mean of the event itself the time like the you know the time for each speaker I, I recommend no more than 30 minutes Okay. So it's sort of like, you think of it as a pod, so it's like a podcast, right? Mm -hmm. um, in, except that the big difference is the podcast, there's no urgency. So their urgency is a really strong uh, um, motivate, motivator, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the, the problem with podcasts is that, you know, when you're pumping out a podcast every week or one every couple of weeks or whatever, and, you know, even if people like you and they go, wow, I love her podcast, there's no, you know, most people are going to sit there and go, yeah, I'll catch that next month. I'll, I'll catch it next week. Oh, and so there's nothing to get me to the table today. Mm -hmm. And so it's very hard to get engagement that way. But with a spot cast, like a telesummit, they're a one-time event, and then they go away. Okay. So that's the difference. So people are excited. They're seeing, um, and that's part of what makes a, and if you want, I could talk about the three keys to putting on a successful spot cast. But that's what makes it um, successful. One of the things is, you know, really pumping that up and letting people know, hey, this is, you know, a short time event. If you want to know how to create a, a killer online profile and get the opinion of top, you know, five top leading experts in the dating and relationship field, right? Mm -hmm. Now's your chance. You got to do it now because next week this thing's going to be gone. And it has to be gone. Like you have to yeah. fulfill that yeah that promise there so yeah let's talk about the three keys and then after that let's get into i want to learn about your program that you have you know that, that we're offering here today so yeah tell us what, what are the three keys 
Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. So first key is topic. Like I said, right, you got to create a compelling, very specific topic that's focused on the problem, not the solution. So the two biggest mistakes that coaches and others make is when, um, as I said, they're not specific enough. And the second is that, and this is a pretty common mistake, uh, people confuse the problem with the solution. So they're focused on the solution instead of the problem. So I'll give you an example for that. I have a colleague who's a tapping coach. Have you guys heard of tapping NLP? Have, yeah. yeah. So that's what she does, and she helps people um, – get over their mindset stories and she's completely enamored of the 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 her method which is tapping so she wanted to host a summit on all about tapping and I, you know i told i said i don't i really don't think you want to do that and i tried to talk her out of it but she wouldn't hear it so she had all these tapping experts come on and they were all talking about tapping so the audience that she generated with this summit or it wasn't yeah, it was a summit was people who were interested in becoming tapping practitioners okay Not people she helped people with tapping that's her solution overcome money blocks so she did she developed a list that wasn't her ideal client oh, okay. okay she wasn't teaching people how to how to become a tapping practitioner she was using that method to help people overcome money blocks. So that would have been a much better topic for her is overcoming money blocks, right? Mm -hmm. so, so you want to focus on the problem, not the solution. So okay. magnetic topic is one really important. So then the next thing is the speakers. Um, you want to get, again, as I said earlier, you want to get speakers that all have similar promotional juice. And, you know, finding speakers, a lot of people think, oh, gosh, where am I going to find these speakers? That is so easy. There's, because I don't even know. I didn't want to say <laughs> thousands, millions, tens of thousands. There's a lot of people, okay, that, are, that have between 1,000 and 10,000 on their list that are looking for more exposure. Mm -hmm. the problem, so the problem is not finding speakers. The problem is getting them excited to promote it getting excited, yes. excited to promote your event with you, right? Um, getting them on board and juiced up, right? And uh, probably the biggest mistake that people make there is they, you know, especially people that are just putting on their first event and, you know, where you're, you're always a little unsure of yourself when you're doing something for the first time. And the biggest mistake people make is coming, is approaching the speakers from this, um, with this attitude of, oh, would you partner with me, please? I would love this so much. And, you know, like you're doing me this big favor. Um, so the problem with that is from the speaker's point of view. So speakers don't really have an issue with, um, you know, doing something like this with somebody who's doing it for the first time. We really don't, you know. But when you come off with that kind of demure attitude, it appears to the speaker as if you're not capable. And mm. so now the speaker is going to have doubts of like, is this person going to pull this off? Or are they going to flake out? Right. And so what you don't realize, what you think is just maybe being authentically expressing your feelings is going to is very likely to be perceived as not capable. And so that person's going to cut, even if they accept your invitation to be a speaker, they're going to be a little, I don't know, you know, when it gets down to it, they're going to be, I don't know if I really want to promote this to my list or, you know, it's not, it's going to be the opposite of getting them excited to promote and that's it. A, that's a great point with anything. And yeah, Abigail actually says she has a good, good point. <clears throat> that's a great point with anything because um, until I started gaining confidence, you know, I would reach out to people and as, like, basically like I was begging, you yeah. know, would you please, please do this for me too, you know, that kind of thing. And it, it's really the energy shift in my confidence level. And in, instead of me asking is for me, I don't want to say telling, but it's more directing them my way. So I'm more like saying, here's the way you go to what I want, <laughs> basically. So it's directing traffic to me and it works so, I mean, I've interviewed like almost, I'm close to 300 people now, and it's due to that confidence of, hey, I want you on my show, here's uh, the date and the time and blah, 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 and I just like, sh just lay it straight out. And it, it 
game changer. And they probably, people don't, probably don't ask you a question. It's so funny when I first started coaching people and they would ask me, well, I don't know, but I don't have a website yet. How, nobody's going to want to do this if I don't have a website. And I was like, nobody will ask you if you have a website. They don't care. Yeah. And it's so funny though, Linda, because without fail, without fail, if somebody was worried about that, without fail, the speaker would ask them, well, what's your website? What's your list size? <laughs> Oh, they were reflecting funny? that energy back. <laughs> like, yeah. And I'm sitting here going, nobody asked you about that because nobody was asking me about it because I'm just like you. I'm just like, matter of fact, hey, you want to do this? Let's do this together. And right, you like you're coming to the table as equals. Yeah. And I think when I reached out to you for this one, I said, hey, you ready to do another interview on your spot cast? And you're like, yes. I mean, it's really that yeah. simple because the like you like you mentioned, you know, the speakers they want they want that visibility. They want to share what they're doing. They want to be able to make that offer to whatever it is that they're offering, and so this gives them an opportunity to do that. So you're actually doing them a favor, you know, yeah. by putting well, them on your on your spot cast or your tele summit, whatever. Well, you're doing them a favor. Well, and remember though that it's 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 not it's a really an equal thing because you're mm -hmm. asking them to promote to their list. Right. So that's so you are asking them to do something for that's you. True. But what people forget when they're doing this first time is that you are giving them something in return. So it they forget that they don't realize that what they're offering is valuable to them, to the speaker. And they forget that and just feel like, oh, I'm, oh my God, you're going to promote for me. Thank you so much. Without realizing, hey, you better put your big girl panties on and let yeah. them know that you're going to do your side, uh, your part to make sure that you're giving to them the exposure that they're doing this for in the first that's, place. That's or true. Good point. Think, oh, I yes. should have promote for this chick. She's a flake. Right. right. <laughs> you don't want that because then they'll never come back. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's the se that's the second most important thing is getting the speakers excited. And then the third thing, Linda, is the promotion, right? So there are a few moving parts to the promotion. And again, as the host, that's what you're giving. So you want to have your act together there. You're creating promotional copy that the speaker will modify and send to their list. Mm -hmm. but, and you want to write really compelling, good copy. You want to have a good idea of the problem and the pain, right? Just like any good copy, you want to create a registration page that's high converting. You want to have that link to a excuse me, a thank you page. And you want to have that go into an autoresponder to collect people's leads. And by the way, most of these uh, are, most of the registration pages are, uh, have an opt-in video, a very short two minute opt-in video, and you want that to be on, right? So you want to have a good conversion rate really important. And again, when you act so demure that you're giving the speakers doubts, it's like, does she know what she's doing? Is she going to know how to like put up, put up a registration page that converts? Is, is she going right. to, you know, have this like rambling opt-in video that everybody's going to go, oh, forget it. And I'm going to send my list to that. I'm going to recommend to my people on my list that they go to this page and this chick is just going to be out there. Mm -hmm. Right. So that you see what I'm saying? So that's what you really want to have together on your end as the host. You want to have that stuff lined up and really, really working really on that. So how long would you say if you're starting from from brand new scratch, you um, not counting the, the list building and all that stuff, but like, you know, building the okay, So you said here um, you need to write promotional copy create a registration page, creating a thank you page, creating an autoresponder, creating an opt-in video. So for those things right there, about if you were to, to encapsulate it into a time frame, how long would you say about that something like that might take? I know it's going to, it's going to be different for everybody, but it's like an average. <laughs> it's really going to be different for everybody. I mean, the actual mechanics of it, you know, somebody that knows what they're doing, I can create that stuff in like, 45 minutes to an hour, okay. uh, you know, but then what makes it converting is not the mechanical creating the page and all that, um, or even knowing how to create the page. It's knowing what to say on the video, knowing what to say in the copy. So it's yeah. kind of a combination of all of that. Right. So 
there's there's the technical piece and then there's the marketing piece the actually what's going to convert what you say or write right okay cool so about four to eight hours <laughs> I'd say yeah. for, for me probably about four to eight hours yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go to the, um, that was the second key, right? No, it was the third. So first was um, topic, magnetic topic. Second was speakers, getting them excited. And third was the promo, getting, making sure you're, sorry, my printer just started printing. Oh, for me. <laughs> and the third is, uh, is uh, making sure that you got your promo that's hitting, hitting on that promo. Oh my gosh, that is so, that's like the, the most important thing right there is that copy, that um, content, because if if it's not compelling enough for them to click, then it's not going to do anything. So you got to get them to click and you know, figuring that out can take a while if you don't know what you're doing. Exactly. You might and never figure a, it out if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, and that's the thing. The speakers are all going to be driving traffic. They're going to tell. They're going to reach out to their beloved list, the people on their list, and say, "Go to this page, which will be your registration page, right?" Mm -hmm. And and then, like I say, if you're just rambling on the video, or you don't really say, you know, you're just talking about yourself, or uh, you know, whatever, and everybody clicks off, and they see that, like, they're you know, their, their click through rate is 10% or something. You're going to have egg on your face. That's not real good. Right? Yeah. So you want to make sure that everything is high converting that you really got it. Cool. Well, now why don't you, um, we're getting close to the end here. So why don't you talk about your new program, what it's all about? You can go to livinglive.tv. It's right there on the screen um, slash spot cast. Why don't you tell us what that's all about? My husband's trying to sneak behind me to grab the thing off the printer. Oh, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So in so Instant Tribe is the program that um, where I teach people how to pull off this spot cast. So what's really cool, like I said, the program I've developed um, over several years and literally coaching hundreds of people through successful telesummits and then creating this spot cast model. So in the program, what we do, it's and I want to just let everybody know this is um, not a home study course. This is not an online course. This is not this is like weekly calls where I step people oh. step by step through this mm. um, process. And I've been very successful in teaching this for many, many years um, with people. So basically, I have developed what I call my magnetic topic process. We mm -hmm. start there and help you create a magnetic topic out of your passion, what you love. You don't even have to have clarity or know what you're going to be coaching. We can pull a magnetic topic out of you. And that just hosting the whole event will help to give you clarity on that. And the cool thing about this process, Linda, is that um, people use this not just for coming up with a topic for their spot cast, but also for creating webinars or ebooks or other trainings mm -hmm. that will attract leads um, also. So we start with the magnetic topic process. It's a nine week program, by the way. Okay. And every week there's just a couple of action steps and it's really cool how you weave just a couple, you know, these different action steps together and you end up with this full blown thing. So magnetic topic, then um, scripts, swipe copy templates, everything from the invitation email to what to say to the speaker to get them excited about everything and again it's dialed in to the max so you don't have to reinvent the wheel for anything and then this is the part i'm most excited about this year what we realize we my company we have a, re, a absolute no person left behind policy so mm -hmm. i am always trying to figure out where are people getting stuck how can i get them on stuck what's the best way and one of the places that I found people were still getting stuck was with the technology right yes. sometimes they were hiring VAs that were you know charging them everything from a couple hundred to a couple thousand like huge disparity and or trying to stumble through it themselves and I finally just said oh the hell with it I, and now we're just lending our tech team to everybody and we're coming up with the back end for you wow so it's a done for you thing my tech team we have six 
um, professionally designed registration pages that you can choose from. And then we have a really easy step-by-step -step tutorial to show you how to customize it, to put your colors, your images, whatever you want on it. We hook it up to your autoresponder, the thank you page, all that. And then the opt-in video, we have a proven uh, template for writing your script for you. We, you can do this on your iPhone. You don't need any fancy equipment. We've basically just dialed this in to the umpteenth degree so that there's no excuse. Like everybody that comes out of this program creates a, an amazing uh, and successful spot cast where they have a list of engaged prospects at the end of the process, which is the whole goal. This is so awesome because it what I'm hearing is it's a DFYWI, right? Done for you with you. Yeah, it's done. And uh -huh, it's like exactly. it's about time that kind of thing comes out. You see, Abigail says, thank you, ladies, for everything you shared. You're welcome, Abigail. Um, but it sounds like, um, yeah, that's, that's about time. I love that idea because I'm hearing how you're going to teach me how to do it, but then also there's things in the back end that you're going to do for me that are going to make it so that this stress that – because because if you get too stuck in the technical, then odds are it's never going to happen. You're not going to push it out there. So you guys are, you're getting that part out of the way. Like you can't use that as an excuse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's really fun to see, um, you know, I've been testing this with uh, some of my clients and my other programs and it's so fun to see this piece the tack piece that used to just put people in convulsions, right? You know, it's like, ah, and they'd be stuck and like talk about mindset. Your brain just goes everywhere and you can't focus on anything, mm -hmm. you know, and we just like here, give us your information. We give it back to you. Boom, done. And they're like, wow, this is just amazing. Yeah. And like you said, just take that off. It really reduces the stress and lets you focus in on the real juice of the thing, which is really the relationships you're building with your speakers. Yeah. And just let you That's focus helpful. in on that and have fun with it, right? Yeah, so you got me thinking, like thinking like what kind of, what what topic could I do, you know? So got my wheels spinning. So I'll be reaching out to you. I'm excited. It sounds like something I should be doing anyway because I do all these interviews. I probably already have my, my spot cast, a whole bunch of them, if I just went through and pieced through the different pieces from the different experts I've already interviewed, you know? I don't know. Well, join the program and that's, you know, you, you do, you've got, you probably do have a lot of different pieces, but when you join the program um, and what, and, and I'll probably, here's what I'll do. I'll offer your audience the same bonus that I gave to the people who participated in my webinar. Ooh, and that? that, that is a one-on-one -on -one call with me to work out the magnetic topic. Now we get plenty of coaching on that in the group and with all the materials, but to make sure that we nail it, I meet with you because that, that's like my specialty is pulling that out of people. Um, but that's what we'll do. That's the very first thing we do. We sit there and we look at um, what do you want to coach people on or help people with? What are those people struggling with? So that's that's the real thing. And then we, I even have a process, like I say, that I put you through where you go out and talk to people and ask some questions. And they will tell you what it is that they want to know. They will give you, the uh, people in your audience will give you the topics they, that they want and that's what makes it magnetic. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. So that's a one-on-one -on -one call with Barb to work out your magnetic topic. I love it. I love it. Well, let's see, any final words for our audience before we head out here? You know, I just want everybody on this call to know that you can do this. Not only should you do it, right? Because um, it will just 10x your business. It will speed up your business. But you're completely capable of doing it. Mm -hmm. The world is ready for you and it needs you. And dare I say, quit messing around <laughs> and get out there for crying out loud. It's okay. Don't use I'm, I don't have clarity as an excuse anymore. It doesn't fly. Right. Okay, you got it. You get out there and this is a way to get out there. This is a way to put yourself out there and talk to the people that you need to talk to, which is your audience to get clarity, mm -hmm. clients and cash. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. And yeah, stop hiding. Get yourself out there. So go to again, livinglive.tv slash spotcast. At least check it out. Um, even if it's not something that, that you think is for you right now, it might be something for you later. So go check it out. Just see what it's all about. And Barb, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And this is a great new topic. I'm excited to see where this goes. 
and see how this becomes the new summit. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's it's fast on its way to becoming the new summit. <laughs> or people start saying spotcast rather than summit, right? Spotcast, spotcast, spotcast. Awesome. <laughs> You guys have a great day and thank you again so much, Barb, for tuning in. Go to livinglive.tv slash podcast and we will see you guys soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.